and welcome to another episode of The Joy of Mathematics. I'm Toby and I'm so glad that you could join me today. I'm going to run a few examples across the bottom of the screen of things that we will come to understand today. Now I understand if you might be having a little bit of a stressful day today because it's not often that someone who's studying logarithms is having the best of days. Not because logarithms aren't great, because they are, but because the process of learning to be tested can sometimes come with a lot of stress. So we're going to start off this lesson by drawing some trees on a sloping hill, much like the one behind me today. These are happy little trees and there are lots of forests around the world filled with trees, each of them different. So I want you to feel your stress melt away into the leaves of the trees. If we had a tree that was doubling in size every year, then say after four years, it would be 16 times as tall as when we started. This is not quite to scale, but I think you get the idea. Now, mathematically, we could write that down. And, well, it is essentially 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. You could also write that as 2 to the 4, because there are 4 2s, is equal to 16. But there is one other way that we can write it, and that is log of base 2, 16 is equal to 4. So these are equivalent. This is just our logarithmic form of this up here. It's a little bit more familiar written like this. And logs are really as easy as that. Students often get very intimidated by logs because the way they're written is just something we don't have a lot of practice with. But once they start to be familiar, I would hope they start to be a little easier. If another tree was to triple in size every year, we can draw him getting bigger here. We want to know how many years it would take until this tree was 27 times as big as when we started. So, we can write that down as 3, which represents that it's tripling this time as opposed to doubling before. 3 to the what? And I'll write our unknown variable as a little tree. Usually people write an x here, but there's no reason it can't be a little tree. So 3 to the what is going to equal 27. Well, just using our log rule from before, we could rewrite this as log in base 3 of 27 is equal to tree, our unknown variable. Okay, and you might be able to just figure this one out by sort of thinking about it, but in fact in this case our tree would be equal to 3. 3 to the 3 would be 27. And that's just another example of using this log notation. In each of these forms, there is a base, an exponent, and an argument. So one way to remember how to go between these two things is that the base of the logarithm is always the same as the base of the exponent. In this case, it is 3. Here we have our exponent, and here we have our argument. And another way that you could remember how to write this form out would be to draw a cross-section of a log. One that has an anti-clockwise swirl on it. Then you could follow this pattern from the base to the exponent to the argument. To remember the same order to get back to this one up here. Let the rhythm of it flow off your chalk like a log rolling gently down a hill. 
logs will become good friends of yours. They are useful to understand really large or small numbers. But don't get too friendly though. The log function is only defined when the base is larger than zero, but not equal to one. To see why, if we had a log with a base of one and say the number two, well, what could this equal? There is nothing that one to the power of would give you two. So in fact, this is undefined. Um, and it would be the same if you had log zero of two. There was no way to have zero to the power of something giving you two. Also, if we were to have a negative number to a fractional power, we might end up with imaginary numbers, and that would be a bit of a mess. So because these choices of base are not reliable and we consider them a little bit too flaky, they're not included as part of the function. Looking back at our forest, if we had a tree again that was doubling every year, but we take a look at it and it's actually half its size, then let's think about what's going on here. So we could write it down in log form and what we could say is log two, that two again represents that it was doubling of a half because it is now half its size is equal to what? Well, it actually would be equal to minus one because two to the power of minus one would give you a half. So this tree has actually got minus one as I guess it's time parameter. So it's a bit of a time traveling tree there. But it also makes sense, you know, if it's doubling every year, how far do you have to look back to see when it was half its size? Well, you have to look back one year. Now we can do one last example with this tree up here. So say I had this written out, which is log two of one. Well, what's going on here is that a tree is doubling in size every year and it is just as big as when it started. Its value is one. So how long has it been growing for? Well, it has actually been growing for zero amount of time. You're looking at it right now because it is its current size. Just a reminder that that in our exponential form would have been two, curl around to the zero, curl back to here is equal to one. There are some special logs. Our default spawn log is log base 10. It's so commonly used that it's usually just written as log, such as on your calculator. We also have logs in their natural habitat, written as ln of x. These are logs in base e, which is Euler's number, and it pops up in cases of exponential growth and decay. So it's really as easy as that. So take a stroll in the woods and don't let logs intimidate you any longer. I'd like to wish you happy studying and I hope you have an absolutely mathematical day.